Welcome to Bits of an Artist's Life. This is Sandy Hester. Grab yourself a cup of coffee or tea. This week, we are going to be diving in even deeper into values. I'm just so glad that you enjoyed last week's video because I worked really hard on it and I got great feedback. It was so helpful to so many of you. Last week, we looked at your palette. What kind of palette do we have? Do we have good value in our palette with a simplified palette? And then also, we talked about the colors that we constantly mix and reach for. Is there a good value range in those? Most beginners and even intermediate painters will struggle with value because we stay in the middle value. It's easy to make pretty colors in the middle value range. It's hard to make good lights that are not chalky but have nice color but are still light. And it's hard to make darks that are rich and beautiful and filled with color and not just flat and bland and too dark. So I looked at my palette and what are the piano keys that I'm reaching for? Do I have a good value range or am I just playing in the middle of the piano and not all piano keys to make a harmonious, beautiful value plan? Today, what we're gonna do is look a little deeper into value. I'm gonna share how I use it. I'm gonna give you some examples of other artists and some of mine of the way people are using value plan to lead the eye around and bring attention to the focal point. Then we're going to, I'm going to do some demos of simple value plans to show you how you can use value to make the most of your art. And then I'm going to show you some other examples at the very end once we've kind of gotten our eyes adjusted and thinking about value. It is full on spring. I barely have a voice and I'm hoping it will last through the whole video. I'm so sorry that you're having to listen to a scratchy Sandy. It's like Miss Scratchy voice here today. Got my warm water with a little honey, hoping that will get me through this. There is a, another way that I'm not going to teach you today how people use value. There's this kind of percentage thing, this percentage of lights, this percentage of mid value, and this percentage of darks. I think that's a great way to paint if your brain can function like that. That's way too much for my little pea brain to think about along with all the other things while I'm painting. The way I use value and think about value, it's in three ways. One, the focal point. Your eye, when you look at a painting, is naturally going to go to where there is the most contrast. So where there is the lightest and the darkest, it's gonna go there. So focal point is where you want the most value. And we're gonna see that in some examples that I show you. The other way I use it is, is, is to lead, and not just me, the way I use it and other artists use it is to lead your eye around or into the focal point. So basically, use it in a compositional way. The third way to use value is to push and pull. So darks naturally come forward, and we're gonna see that in these examples, and lights fall back. So again, there's compositional things in that. I'm gonna to try to just stick to value today. There will be a tiny bit of compositional talk, but I mainly wanna focus on value. But darks come forward, lights pull back. So for things like, let's say, landscape, you don't necessarily want to use darks in the background. You want those to recede. Now, if you're doing more of a flat picture plane, where you're not trying to get atmosphere and trying to say that that mountain or trees are in the distance, it, you can throw out these rules. Any of these rules you can throw out, but these are things to, that are really good to know and use to be able to make your painting work and say what you want it to say. But they're just rules. I wanna show you some paintings and point out these things to you. Most of these I have a screenshot from Instagram so you can see who the artist is and what their handle is. So you can go find them yourself if you want to look at some more of their stuff. Several of these are my friends and some of them are people I don't know at all. The first one I wanted to show you is from Peggy Carl Roberts. She is the artist who first started teaching me about value. She is a great teacher. Okay, so this is one of Peggy's. Peggy here is using value but also detail to draw you to this figure on the left. That has the most value contrast, lights and darks, and your eye goes immediately to that left figure and then you move around the picture plane. This next artist, C. Jefferson Art on Instagram. I love his work, it's very loose. 
it may not be so obvious in this color version of this because you just get enamored with pattern and color, but when we look at the black and white, your eye definitely wants to go to this little area here. This is where the lightest light and the darkest dark is. And then because of the circle, you move around and look at the bowl and the fruit in the bowl, but he is definitely using value to say, this is where I want you to look. This painting here is from a, a friend of mine, artist friend of mine, Elizabeth Geiger. She is an incredible artist, one of my favorite artists. I love the looseness of her work, the color. She is a master at value, and she is telling you immediately, look at this bowl of oranges, because look here at the value. That is where you've got this subtle value, You've also got things all around the painting leading your eye to this bowl of, what is that, oranges. I had to go back to the color version to be able to tell. And notice this big black napkin here in the foreground. It not only comes forward, but it is pointing, she's got it pointing in a way towards that bowl of oranges. Now again, I'm getting into compositional things, but she is using value. If you notice where she's got the darkest darks, she moves your eye around in a circle composition around the painting and keeps you in the painting with value. This painting is from Chantelle Jaffe, and I absolutely love her work. She is using in this painting value with all these lines going on in this person's outfit to lead you up to the focal point, which is the face. The face has the darkest and light, lightest values. I mean, her, the outfit is obviously dark and light also, but it's busy. And then you have this calm space up in the face, and that's what those lines are all leading you to look at. Really great use of value. Here's another one from my friend Elizabeth Geiger, and look at this black and white right there near that pear in the bowl. That's where she's wanting you to stay and look, and those grapes, look at how the dots are leading you into that area with the pears. This is a painting here of um, Jennifer Prochinsky, I think is how you say her last name. I love Jennifer's work. And look at this painting here of that man in the background. Obviously the face has the focal point there with the values, but look how that arm is leading you up to the face, that light. So that arm just points you and leads you kind of like a road right up into the painting. Okay, this is a lady named Shelby. She is here in Tennessee and I just love her work. Again, very obvious to see where she wants you to look, which is that swan or goose's head. But look how she's using the reflection in the water. There's just this gentle leading up, gently leading your eye up to the swan with that reflection. Again, like a little road. It's kind of telling you walk this way with your eyes and look at the swan. Here's another one. I probably don't even have to turn this black and white because it's so obvious. And there's this triangle, actually two triangles in this painting that is a triangle composition. Okay, this is a painting of Charles Reed. I love his work. I got to study with him a little bit when he was still alive. It's very obvious where he wants you to look. He uses those lights of the flowers right next to the dark outfit of the little girl, and your eye immediately goes there. He's also using value, though, to lead your eye around, again, kind of in a circle with those other heads. It's just beautifully done painting to keep your eye where he wants you to keep it. This is another one of my friend, Emily Powell. This is an interesting one. I think if you just looked at this in color, you would say that that blue boat is the darkest value and maybe that blue sky, but it's actually not. Let's look at this in black and white. Look how light that value actually is. So it can be deceptive, but she's using lights and darks there to still bring your eye into that boat. And the lightest, the largest light area with all those darks there, like the inside part of that boat that the captain would be in, is exactly where it should be in composition on that canvas. So color can be deceptive with value. That's why it's, it's good to look at things with either a value finder or squint. This is another painting from a man I just found out about and I just love his work, Christopher Wood. This painting is just juicy and everything about it. You, you think that it's the texture and the color that makes you 
and, and the looseness that makes you love this painting. But value is what is doing the work here. So obviously the house is where he wants you to look. It's the lightest and darkest with all the busyness there also. Because the sky is also light. There's a compositional thing going on there that he's, he's doing to balance out. But because there's all the dark scattered in the light of the house with the windows, that's where your eye looks. But the, the roads, the tree lines, those are the darker things. And they're literally telling you, go down this road with your eyeball to the house. It's telling you where to look. It's masterfully done. I'm not nearly a master like these other paintings we've looked at, but this was an example of leading your eye around in a circular, circular composition. And this is a painting of mine using darks to lead your eye around and keep you in the painting and keep your eye moving around. So you've got this big area of light in the middle with dark values all around, just leading you, hopefully keeping you in the painting. This is another one of mine. It's very colorful. There's a lot of texture and you think that's probably why you like it. But again, value is doing the work here. I've got gentle lines, gentle value lines leading down from the top down to the bottom, basically pointing to these bowl of fruit saying, look here. And then the darkest and lightest is there within the bowl of fruit and it keeps your eye there. This is another painting that I think is deceptive with its color and you think that you know what is the darks because that yellow background is so bright. But look at when we turn this to black and white, there's really just a few darks in there and light mid values. It's mainly light and darks and those darks are right there in the place that they should be for composition to keep your eye and tell your eye where to go. Here's another one of mine. Again, it looks like color and texture and those things are juicy and they're there, but look at when we turn this to black and white. We have the focal points and also using those dark lines of the mountain to lead your eye down into those focal areas. And here's another one that again, it's colorful, but value is really doing the work, not color. It, this one's not as clear you've got this little bit of white, this kind of dash of white that just literally, it's like an arrow pointing you to this house that's not as light, but it's still the focal point. And then these dark lines from the mountain that leads you down and the, the darker contrast in the foreground pushing you up to stay in the painting and into these houses. And then again, the boat, which has light and dark, which is pointing inward. And then this is one that I showed you last week and showed you this with the palette that I used and made. Again, we think color, movement, and texture, but look at this when we turn this to black and white. Obviously those two larger flowers with the light petals is the focal point. And it's where I've got a couple places there with the darkest dark and the lightest lights. And then the other plants gently are pointing, they're leaning inwards. I don't have them out saying go out, like lines going out of the painting. I've got those in, but there's not as strong of value, but still value that's pointing to where I want you to look and to stay. So that's our, let's get us started. Let's get us looking and thinking. Now I want to put you overhead and let's do a little demo of simple ways to think about these things of value being the focal point, leading your eye around and pushing and pulling. Okay, let's jump into some demo. I was doing some practice stuff earlier and thinking about the different ways that I could show you some simple ways to do. We want to first focal point. We also want to think about leading the eye and also push and pull. So that is what we will look at. I'm going to use some of my watercolor gouache palette here. I've got a video on my palette and what I put on here and why I use watercolor and gouache. And then I also have a handful of Neocolor ones. Neocolor ones are not water soluble. So they're basically just Neocolors are like high quality, like super high quality crayons. And let's just look at some ways that we can use value. So firstly, let's just think of a very simple, like a figure. So let's 
So let's say we've got this figure here. Probably could have gone even lighter, but I'll do that with some Neo Colors when that dries. Let's say we definitely want her to be focused, the focus. And we'll put some a nice dark, rich top on her. Let's give her some nice dark hair. And some very simple features, a mouth, nose. And then let's give her just kind of a, a mid value. Whoops, that is definitely not mid value. Background. So not as strong as it could be. And we can see where our eyes go immediately, straight to her face. I think we could lighten this background when it dries and make that an even stronger value. Let's see if we could just do it right here with our white wash. Okay, so that is telling me where to look. I've got the lightest light surrounded by the darkest dark. Let's do another one with maybe just some trees. One of the things that I've tried to do is make sure there was a mixture in all of these of like figure, landscape, and still life. And I think I did that with our first little, uh, what was that thing, uh, slideshow. Okay, let's give ourselves like a little frame. And even though that is still wet, let's put some nice dark trees in there. So again, that is bringing forward, those trees come forward and they also show a strong value. I think when these dry, I'm going to use some of the Neo Color and make this a little bit stronger. Okay, let me show you the kind of push and pull that I was talking about. Well, actually, let's do a couple more over here of this. Let me use, let me grab a few Neo colors. What do I want to use? I'll use this. Let's give ourselves a frame again. Let's use the, the cream of the paper as the white. And we're gonna do everything in her in mid value. Now, if you were using color, the way you would think about this is, oh, I could make her hair, whatever color it is, brown or blonde, red, as long as that's a mid value, it doesn't matter. And her shirt can be any color, as long as that's a mid value. And her face could really be any color, as long as it's the lightest light. And then watch how this transforms and tells you where to look. It's pretty obvious where we want that to look or where we want people to look there. So again, let's do that in color. We're gonna use the cream of the paper as Her face or like you know the white let's do something like this let's pick 
pick a mid value for her shirt. We'll just go with this blue. And let's go with, is this my raw umber? Let's go with this. So that's how you would then do that with color. And let's put a frame around it. Oops, just messed up our woman over there. And let me do a quick demo with, let's do a, a different value plan with this woman. Let's do her face. I feel like I need a smaller brush. Oops, her face started getting out of control and I went to go get some water. Let's get you back in control, woman. There we go. Now let's put maybe a mid-value-ish shirt on her. Let's give her some features. Pop in a couple of little features here. Get her hair back in order. We're just keeping things super simple. Let's give her some eyebrows. If we can plop those in. And now all of that, so we've got light and mid value. Now let's plop in a really nice dark and see how that pops everything. And we can kind of carve back in Both of these are very strong value plans. I feel like she needs some pink cheeks, so I'm gonna give her some. Now let's do the push and pull thing. Let's do, let me grab a few Neo colors that are light, mid, and dark. And let's do a couple scenes here. Let's create this little house, maybe. I'm gonna show you the push and pull. Let's get some windows and some trees. And then maybe some grass and our background. Now let's say that is what is out the window. And if we put a dark window, it pushes all of that into the background. Whereas if we did the same thing but used darker colors here, And then, let's make, see if this Neo color will go over this, yep. Yeah. And then did a white on top of that. Let's 
that in the background comes forward instead of staying in the background. And let's do a couple more examples. So if I've got a house I'm doing that kind of mid value and let's give it some grass and a little bit of sky that's a little bit lighter okay if I want that house to pop if I surround it with something darker it then comes forward makes this the focal point because I've got the lightest and the darkest I could even put some little bushes, and then what about even a road that leads to that? I could even put some little birds on top that again, they're small, so they're not the focal point. Let's do another one where we put the house back here. Let's create another little road leading my eye in. Let's give some little clouds. Then let's surround this with dark, like trees basically. And maybe I even put a little bush out here. I'm gonna use value. This is a compositional thing going on. Maybe I even wanna make that road a little darker leading my eye to this focal point. We could also reverse that and make the house just right there that says focal point. Let's do a little road. Let's give it some scenery some trees. Again, leading my eye to the focal point with value. Let's do this tree one up here. You can see how if I do the trees, dark, they're going to come forward. Then let's give some grass or some foreground. And some background. Now let's say I'm like, whoa, those are way too coming forward. I wanna push those back some. Well, then what we're gonna do is lighten them. Look how immediately that, that went into the background. And now let's say I have something here that I want to come to the foreground. And I'm gonna make that darker. So that's how you use value to push and pull, to lead your eye around. Let's see if we can make these a little stronger over here. always just carve back in with things. Maybe I want to make this even a little bit lighter. Or just move the wet paint around. <laughs> uh, that is still wet. And then what I could do is bring out these trees a little more. I was gonna play with this one a little more, but I really like how that's turned out, so I'm gonna leave that. When you look at this page, though, because these are probably because these are bigger, but your eyes go to these for sure. I wonder if we should do one of these in the value. Let's take this right here and turn this into color. Let's 
Let's give a mid value. I'm not sure if that's mid value. So I'm going to, that looks pretty dark. Just by blotting it, I can make it a little bit lighter. Let's give ourselves some kind of light. Let's make that lighter. Oops. Let's give myself a frame. <laughs> I'm going to use the white of the paper as the white of the house. Then let's get some nice dark. For these trees. Ooh, that is nice. I don't want it a chimney. You asked me it's a little too dark, so I'm going to blot it. Still reads dark, but let's not go bonkaroos. We could give some windows, maybe a little door, and then we could give it some If we want a road coming in, let's make we didn't leave much of a room for a road, but oh, and we could put some bushes. That could be nice. I mean, you could just go on and on. You can see how you build it with like the big shapes first and you just keep going like that. Okay, hopefully this was a good demo. Oh no, how did I get a big blob of something on her head up here? She was going so cute. She was looking so cute. Sorry about that lady. Wow, I messed her whole head up, didn't I? Let's see if I can fix your head. I may not be able to. Well, not that you need to have your head fixed, but I don't really know how that blobbity blob got up there. Can we fix you? Maybe not. No, now you lost an eyeball. Okay, anyways. Now let me show you some examples and some books and we'll wrap up that way. Okay, let's see if we can get through this last part with my voice. So cracky. I've got a handful of books here that I want to continue to demonstrate the things we've been talking about. I brought in one of my paintings to show you this bringing forward, pushing and pulling. So in this actual coffee shop, the windows here did have very dark, I think, did they have dark? I may have done that to be able to push that. So even though I did very warm color buildings, which warm comes forward and cools recede, even though I did that because of value in this darker window, the darker window comes forward and that pushes everything else back. If you squint, like this guy comes forward because he's darker, this dog comes forward, there's a balance there in that and your eyes move around. So I thought that would be a good example to show you of that. Here is a book of David Hockney, which I love this book. Wonderful examples here of value. This tree obviously is where he wants you to first look. The value of it comes forward, it's the most detail, and then your eye moves around. Once again, he's using value here to push and pull. This fence thing comes forward. I mean, it just jets forward, which pushes everything else back. So that tells you this is a gate and it's forward. It's very interesting. In just this flat plane, you can do that. And then these further away things are lighter value. Great example. Okay, I've got another book of Mary Cassette. I mean, as I was looking through this, I was like, woman, you are a master value. Look at this. I mean, you obviously know where you're to look. Not only is this woman looking up at her, there's so many things in this picture with value. So this is the lightest, but look how she used the arm, which just leads you just like a road. This leads you like a road. You're literally, it's like this. You just ride like a car up this road to this figure. Even this tree is suggesting, the flowers along here are suggesting, and these, this has got value going on here. Just beautiful painting and beautiful example. I liked this one also because 
you get to see her sketch, which, so I don't have to even turn this into black and white. You just can see where she wants you to look. And then she's leading, look how much darker. She makes this arm here, she leads your eye up. Here she's using, she decided to make this darker to lead your eye. And, and you just stay here in this circular pattern because of value. Another one using value, the darkest here, and these dark lines to bring you in. Again here, I mean, we could just go on and on, like every painting of hers is like that. Okay, I also thought I would bring in Maude Lewis. She was what people would call now probably an outsider artist, so somebody who didn't like go to school, didn't seem to have a lot of skill. She painted very childlike. I love folk art and outsider art. I love childlikeness. Now, I have painted some of Maud paint, Maud's paintings for myself, like my own version, which I write that actually on the front of the painting. But reproducing some of her works showed me. I just kept saying to myself when I was painting them, woman, <laughs> people would think you didn't have much skill and that you're very childlike, but there is composition, there's value. She knew what she was doing. This is a sign that she had out on, hanging on her house for people to stop by. Look at the value. She tells you exactly what's most important. She wants you to know that paintings are for sale by her. I mean, there's just value going on right there. Here's some other value things. Look at this painting right here these darks just pointing, basically, this light. There's everything about this says, come into this painting this way and stay here. I mean, even the squirrel, the way she used these darker lines and the squirrel being darker. Another one here, using these dark lines to point in. You just kind of stay right here. She uses all this darkness also to keep you within. This draws you in, and then this keeps you from going out of the painting, and it's all with value. Her paintings, you think, color, that's like the first thing you notice and see. Again, value like crazy going on here. Value leading you in. This dog is going in the direction of here, very dark. I mean, just a wonderful use of value and composition. This is another one that's wonderful. All these dark, it's kind of like, duh, 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 follow the road. And then this, this staircase pointing up, the dark trees coming in, the dark trees blocking you to stay in, the dark things up here keeping you in. I mean, it just is, she uses a road to lead you. So I thought that would be another good example. Just, you don't have to be highly trained, been to school for years and years. There is something about just doing it and doing it and knowing what you want to say and what you want to bring focus to and, and practice. Maud sat there in her little house practicing all the time. Okay, this is a book by Charles Reed. Again, love Charles. He was mainly a watercolor artist. Great use of value here. Again, kind of this blocking in, leads your eye, these little clouds even being just a little bit darker, bring your eye around. And I mean, he uses spots of color and value again to, to lead the eye, to tell a story, to block in. This is another good example right here too of using value, creating kind of a uh, circle composition and then using all the little da -da 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 darks against this white, the most contrast and interest is going on here, and this figure leads you in. Got one more of his. Oh yeah, this is another nice one. Again, this tree, look how it's dark and leaning. It's just a road. This is another circle composition. Dark, lead your eye all the way around. Masterful, absolutely masterful. Okay, let's look at Fairfield Porter. Got a few from him that I wanted to show you. I mean, we're going to be seeing the same thing. So I'm encouraging you to squint and see the value. So these trees come forward. Actually, all of this, this, this foreground is darker. It's coming forward, getting lighter. These mountains or islands in the background, lighter. It just, he's using composition and color, but mainly composition to, to bring things forward and to push things. Okay. I mean, does this get any more like, says it, like your eyes just go psh, right here. And then this dark 
dark circle here of the mirror leads your eye around these little bits, just takes your eye around and he's using little bits of value to do that. I can tell my voice is about gone, so I'm glad we're almost done here. Okay, I wonder which one of these I wanted to, both of these are great. I mean, look at this, look at these lines, this dark bringing you in, this dark, because he could have made that lighter because that's in the background, but he's bringing it forward to keep you here. I mean, same thing here. This is just, I love this painting so much. Okay, what did I do for the last one? Oh, this right here. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at this value bringing you in. It's not saying this is the main thing. It's saying this is the little road you come in on, or you can come in this road. And then this dark, this tree just comes forward because this is where he wants you to look. Even though this one is more forward, that's not what he's wanting your eye to go to. It's here. And then that just leads you around. I hope that you will practice doing more of this kind of thing because it is what teaches you. I am not a create a little thumbnail kind of person. I, I know it would probably be helpful, but it's just not how my brain works. I think I have to like get into the painting and decide what I want to push and pull, what I want to lead your eye into. Sometimes the very first step is just get value in there. Get some darks, middles, and lights in there. Usually you're probably already having middle value. Get some darks in there. That's usually the first thing that I started working on. Make sure I've got some good, beautiful, rich darks. If you're not sure how to do that, last week's video will show you that. Also have an acrylics video where I do color mixes in that too. Playing around, get those darks in, and then probably your next step would be working on your lights to make them beautiful and not chalky, getting color in them. And then I think the next step is then manipulating it, pulling the strings. I don't think you can do all of it in one step. Your first step is get darks. Then start thinking about big shapes, kind of like this, big areas. And then you can start thinking about how to guide the eye, your focal point, things like that. So just take it slow. Yeah, I, I hope it was helpful to your, your painting. I hope it feels fun and that I hope that I also hope I made it really easy to understand. I will see you back here in two weeks. You guys are the best, by the way. Can I just tell you like the comments y'all left in the last video just encouraged me like nobody's business. It's a lot of work I put into these videos and the fact that y'all are so kind, you appreciate them. They're helpful. They're inspiring. And you guys let me know that it just means the world. So thank you. I should have turned the camera around and looked you in the face. Actually, let me just do that. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for the kind words, for the way that you support me. I feel y'all's love and it means the world. It keeps me going, even when sometimes there's some, you know, comments that aren't the nicest, they do do me in big time. And I think, oh, I don't wanna do this anymore. And then you guys like shower me with kindness. So, okay. I love y'all, y'all are the best. I'll see you back here in two weeks. Mm -hmm.